Good afternoon. Welcome to the March 2nd formal meeting of the Phoenix City Council. Thank you so much for joining us today. I will call the meeting to order and ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilwoman Ansari. Here. Councilman DeCicio. Councilmember Garcia. Here. Councilwoman Guardado. Here. Councilwoman O'Brien. Here. Councilwoman Stark. Here. Councilman Waring. Here. Vice Mayor Pastor. Here. Mayor Gallego. Here. Thank you for joining us. We have a uh, important meeting today with the South Central TOD plan. We will consider approximately 1800 planned new dwelling units for the city and many other important items. With us today, we have Mario Barajas, who provides Spanish interpretation. Mario, would you introduce yourself? Yes, Mayor, thank you. Good afternoon, once again, my name is Mario Barajas. I will be providing interpretation services to our Spanish residents. I will now take a moment to introduce myself to them and review a few housekeeping matters. Buenas tardes, yo soy Mario Barajas y estaré proveyéndoles el servicio de interpretación. Solo deseamos repasar un par de cositas para los que van a dar un comentario público. Primeramente, favor de hablar despacio. Luego, también pedimos que hablen con claridad y también eviten tener distracciones de fondo. Finalmente, pause después de cada uno o dos oraciones y así le podremos interpretar de la mejor manera posible. Gracias. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mario. Will the city clerk please read the 24-hour paragraph? The titles of the following ordinance and resolution numbers on the agenda were available to the public at least 24 hours prior to this council meeting and therefore may be read by title or agenda item only. Ordinances number G6964 through 6972, S48364 through 48370, and 48372 through 48391, and resolutions 21997 through 22002. Thank you. I'll now turn to our city attorney to explain the role of public comment in city council meetings. Thank you, Mayor. Um, comments, members of the public may speak for up to two minutes to comment on agenda items to be discussed. Comments must be related to the agenda item and the action being considered by the council. General comments that go beyond the scope of the agenda item must be made in the citizen comment session at the end of the agenda. The city code requires speakers to present their comments in a respectful and courteous manner. Profane language, threats, or personal attacks on members of the public, council members, or staff are not allowed. A person who violates these rules will lose their opportunity to continue to speak. Thank you. We next move to agenda item number one, boards and commissions. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Motion to approve Mayor and City Council's boards and commissions nominations. Second. We have a motion and a second from Councilwoman Stark. We do have one member of the public to address the council. Jeremy Thacker, the floor is yours. Jeremy, can you hear us? Um, I was unable to hear Jeremy. Jeremy is marked as opposed to this item. All those in favor of the boards and commissions, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Aye. I believe that passes unanimously. If anyone was opposed, could you say again? Passes unanimously. We next go to the liquor license portion of our agenda. The city provides, as it provides an advisory role to the state of Arizona. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? To approve items 2 through 18, except item 7. Second. Okay. And I'm sorry, Councilman Stark, I could not hear you. A second. Okay. Okay. Yeah, second. Wonderful. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Passes unanimously. We next go to agenda item number 7, Chica's Cabaret. And uh, we'll turn to the vice mayor. Yes, uh, I make a motion of uh, no recommendation. Second. 
We have a motion and a second. Uh, we do have uh, individuals here in support Mark to speak only if necessary. Does anyone need to hear from those individuals Mark to speak if necessary? All right, hearing none, roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Pastor. I apologize. Pastor. Yes. Thank you. Gallego. This is nine zero. Thank you. We next uh, city clerk. Are we ready for ordinances, resolutions, new business planning and zoning? Yes, mayor. Vice mayor, do we have a motion? Motion to approve items 19 through 73, except the following items 25, 35, 36, 43, 51, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73. Noting that item 65 is continued to April 6, and item 71 is as corrected. And excluding items for public comment, items 51 and 71. Second. And thank you. Let me quickly turn to our deputy city manager. I believe we need to also continue item 66 to the April 6th formal and uh, apologize for not warning Mr. Stevenson. Mayor, members of council, yes, please continue item 66 to the April 6th formal uh, agenda. There was a problem with the applicant sign posting a notice for the meeting, so we want to continue it. Thank you. Noting that item 66 is continued to April 6, 2022. Second. Thank you. Any questions or clarifications from the council? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Yeah. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Pastor. Gallego. Yes. Pass is nine zero. Item twenty five is our uh, National Association of City Transportation Officials, also known as NACTO membership. Vice Mayor. I make a no motion. <laughs> Make a motion for item 25. Sorry. <laughs> Second. Thank you. I look forward to supporting this 1. They have been great partners and have helped us as. We've learned from other cities with vision 0 emerging technologies and just generally being a great resource for the city's transportation and. Public safety departments, as well as helping make sure we get. Our fair share of federal grant programs and opportunities. Comments or questions. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. No. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. No. Pastor. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 7 2. Item 35 is a agreement with Tiger Mountain Foundation. I'll turn to Councilwoman Guardado. Thank you, Mayor. Motion to approve item 35. Second. Second. A motion and a second. Councilwoman, do you have any comments? Thank you so much for that. Yeah, this is very, very exciting. I just wanted to briefly thank staff for their work on this item. Today's vote will ensure that the neighborhoods around the John F. Long Homestead Park by 27th Avenue in Glendale will have access to a community garden 
This is part of our larger vision to enhance and improve the quality of life for our residents on 27th Avenue. I want to thank Nancy Allen, Roseanne Albright, and the whole team in the Office of Environmental Programs. I also want to thank the many neighbors who have worked together to move forward their vision for a safer and re safer and re-energized community along 27th Avenue, especially Violence Impact Project, the North Glen Square Association, the Ocotillo Glen Neighborhood Association, and Parks Rx. Um, and also all of the neighbors we've had, uh, you know, we've had so many neighbors that have come out and given their input. A lot of people that are excited about what's going to happen at this park and very thankful for all of them for guiding us through this, through this process and making sure um, that we do what we need to do for these neighbors and handing parks over back to these neighborhoods and very happy for everything that's happening down 27th Avenue. So Today, I am very excited to support this item. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilwoman Ansari. Thank you, Mayor. I also wanted to take the opportunity to thank the Office of Environmental Programs, Nancy, Roseanne, and the whole team. I think um, my colleagues and I can't say enough about how amazing our food resiliency efforts have been, and specifically our focus on engaging farmers um, and local families across our city. Uh, like Councilman Guardado, we decided to use some of the allocation in our ARPA Food Resilient uh, Resilient Food System program to actually add two additional gardens to this program. That's how much uh, we think it adds value to the district. Um, and I know we used one-time American Rescue uh, Fund plan uh, plan funds to support this, but I hope that we can find a way to build long-term consistency through our general budget since it is such a value add to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Any additional comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Yes. I apologize, Councilman. Can you repeat that? Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes, for sure. This is a great project. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Pastor. I apologize, Pastor. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9 0. Thank you. Our next agenda item is the small business workforce training program. Noting that Councilwoman Pastor will not be participating in this vote. Do we have a motion? I will move to approve. Okay. We have a motion Sorry. and a second. Small business is big business in Phoenix, and we appreciate our partners, including Cahoots Local First and others, in supporting our vibrant small business community. Comments? Councilwoman Ansari. I actually have a question for Chris, if that's, if she's there. Wonderful. We'll invite our community and economic development director, Chris Mackey, to come down to the podium. Thank you, Chris, for coming down. It's really just one question, but I appreciate you taking the time. Um, so I know that the local first community kitchen was an awardee, um, and I was hoping you could tell us more about other types of demonstration projects that could be a contender for these funds. Um, specifically, I'm just wondering for our own outreach efforts for our office, is this up for grabs for any business with an idea or project aimed at um, strengthening an industry? And are there any limitations that you could help specify for us? Thank you. Mayor Councilman Ansari, uh, absolutely. So this would be a program that could be utilized by other small businesses, other small business training programs to be able to add value in capital improvements or long-term training for the broader community. And what I mean by that is, let's use the example of the Rio Salado Community College and uh, Local First. It was a great building and a great space to be able to train restaurateurs but it needed a walk-in refrigerator. 
And so what we did was a council so thoughtfully funded the, the amount for the walk-in refrigerator for the community college and local first out of our ARPA funds, but now we have metrics over the next uh, next years that require them to train 100 individuals every month and to do those type of things. You know, you have demonstration projects that immediately come to mind for things like, um, you know, as we look at, at climate change, as we look at our sustainability, those architects and engineers and projects that would do installations that we're consistently hearing can't be done, um, but would then bring in ASU's architects and, and GCU's architects and community college individuals and professionals to show them how these items can be accomplished in these projects. Again, there would be metrics that would have to be met through a contract on that front as well. It could be in, in so many different areas and that's why we wanted to bring the framework of the program to the council and gain your concurrence, but then each individual project would come back to the city council for its approval. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Really, really great program. I'm excited about this. Thank you for the additional details. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Ansari. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. DeCicio? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Gallego? Yes. That's is 8-0. Thank you. We next go to item 43, which is a foundation grant from the Hickey Family Foundation. I will turn to Councilman Waring, who is our leader on human trafficking issues. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I can't thank the Hickey Foundation enough uh, for, for their participation uh, in helping fund our heat unit. Uh, I know it means a lot to the officers. I think it means a lot to all of us. Obviously, this is an incredibly vital role that the heat unit plays in protecting particularly young people and families um, because a lot of the, it's mostly women who are victims, uh, a lot of them have kids as well. So getting them out of that life is of paramount importance. The Heat Foundation plays an incredible role in that, and I just wanted to, to thank them for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? And I, I, <laughs> Where I was thinking it. Yeah, I'll I, I'm sorry. I moved to approve. Sorry. Second. We have a motion from Councilman Waring and a second from the Vice Mayor. Any additional comments? I'll extend my appreciation to the Hickey Family Foundation as well. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. DeCicio? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Pastor? Yes, yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 9-0. Thank you. We next move to item 51, the downtown shared electric scooter yes. pilot program extension and electric bike bicycle legalization. Will the city clerk please read the title? Item 51 is for ordinance G6967, an ordinance amending ordinance G6602 to extend the dockless electric stand-up scooter pilot program by extending the sunset date in ordinance 6602 and further amending Phoenix City Code Chapter 4, Article 1, Section 4-1, Chapter 23, Article 1, Section 23-1C, Article 10, Sections 23-120 and 23-128F, Chapter 24, Article 2, Sections 24-43A and 24-51F, Chapter 36, Article 1, Section 36-1, Article 2, Sections 36-29, 36-40.1, 36-40.2, 36-41, 36-42, 36-43, 36-44, 36-45, 36-46, 36-47, 36-48, 36-49, 36-50, 36-51, 36-52, 36-53, 36-54, 36-55, 36-56, 36-57, 36-58, 36-59, 36-60, 36-61, 36-62, 36-63, 36-64, 36-65, 36-66, 36-67, 36-68, 36-69, 36-70, 36-71, 36-72, 36-73, 36-74, 36-75, 36-76, 36-77, 36-78, 36-79, 36-80, 36-81, 36-82, 36-83, 36-84, 36-85, 36-86, 36-87, 36-88, 36-89, 36-90, 36-91, 36-92, 36-93, 36-94, 36-95, 36-96, 36-97, 36-98, 36-99, 36-100, 36-101, 36-102, 36-103, 36-104, 36-105, 36-106, 36-107, 36-108, 36-109, 36-110, 36-111, 36-112, 36-113, 36-114, 36-115, 36-116, 36-117, 36-118, 36-119, 36-120, 36-121, 36-122, 36-123, 36-124, 36-125, 36-126, 36-127, 36-128, 36-129, 36-130, 36-131, 36-132, 36-133, 36-134, 36-135, 36-136, 36-137, 36-138, 36-139, 36-140, 36-141, 36-142, 36-143, 36-144, 36-145, 36-146, 36-147, 36-148, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 36-149, 
I move item 51, downtown shared electric scooter pilot program extension and electric bicycle legalization. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Come, uh, we do have two members of the public to address the council, and we'll we'll uh, just go to uh, council vice mayor for questions or comments. I just uh, wanted to know that with the extension, uh, that it will be opened up to other vendors. Anybody there? And I believe I, I see our streets director and deputy city manager coming down to answer questions. So welcome, Mario and Keeney. I'm Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor Pastor, members of the council. Uh, there is opportunity to be able to uh, bring in additional vendors, although uh, what we would prefer, right, right now we have two active vendors, um, Spin and Razor, who are working with us. Uh, we have two other vendors that have um, been involved in the program since earlier in the inception, but are no longer active in there, Bird and Lime. Uh, we have the ability, I think, to um, involve those uh, vendors if they would like to be back into the scooter um, program for this uh, year extension. Uh, but if there's any vendors above, beyond that, I don't think we would, we would prefer not to do that because there is a vetting process associated with that. Uh, but we have not heard interest from other vendors, um, potentially outside of the uh, original vendors that were in, involved in this program from its inception. So am I hearing Bird and Line were active and they're no longer active, but if they want to engage, they can engage. That is correct, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. We will go now to uh, public testimony. We'll begin with Fong followed by Cindy. Hi, thank you so much for the opportunity. My name is Fong Bui, Head of Government Partnerships for SPIN. Uh, I'm also calling on behalf of our counterparts at Razor. Uh, we support staff's proposal to extend the existing pilot program in order to provide a continuity of service uh, for residents and visitors. Um, we also want to extend our support to allow um, e-bikes on public streets citywide. Um, for Spin and Razor, we look forward to the opportunity to continue serving constituents and are happy to take any feedback or questions that the council may have. Thank you again. Thank you. Cindy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor Gallego and members of the council for providing me with the opportunity to speak to this item. Downtown shared electric scooter pilot program extension and the electric bicycle legalization this afternoon. For the record, my name is Cindy Gon, representing Phoenix Community Alliance, PCA. PCA has been involved with bringing shared electric scooters to downtown Phoenix since 2018. We work closely with downtown stakeholders, including business owners, residents, city of Phoenix streets, transportation, PD, fire departments, and yes, e-scooter companies. Um, the e-scooter pilot program is just one piece of the micro-mobility program our downtown really needs. It provides active transportation and micro-mobility options for everyone downtown, the residents, the students, the folks coming down here to work, and the visitors from not just downtown Phoenix in the metro area, but the state, the country, and from around the world. Extension of the pilot program and electric bicycle legalization will help keep automobile congestion off our downtown streets. It will contribute to the city's climate action plan by reducing automobile emissions as well. We support the program extension, the added inclusion of e-bikes in the ordinance, and inclusion of both Bird and Lime as added vendors as they were originally sanctioned in hopes that they become permanent soon in terms of the, the ordinance and the program. And we respect, respectfully ask that you approve this agenda item. Thank you both for your testimony. Any council questions or comments? Councilwoman Ansari. Thank you, Mayor. Um, really glad that Cindy called in. I think she just um, captured all of the points very well. Um, the downtown community has been working on advancing micro mobility for many, many years, and um, numbers show that people are huge fans of this and huge proponents. Um, we also just voted on Vision Zero recently, and as we work to advance, um, safety for our roadways, what better way to do so than planning for micro mobility advancements. So I'm really excited to support this item. We 
cannot reel back on current plans and progress that we've made in this realm, especially in our downtown. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilwoman. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. DeCicio? No. Garcia? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? No. Pastor? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 7 2. Now we move to planning and zoning matters. We'll begin with item 67. I will open the public hearing. Uh, we do not have any members of the public to speak, except for there is a representative for the applicant. If any council members have questions, do any council members have questions? Close the public hearing. I will turn to Councilman Waring for a motion as this is in district two. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I move uh, approval of the motion with related ordinances. Second. Mayor, uh, members of uh, council, in this particular item, item 67 is a general plan amendment, so it would be adopt the related resolution. <laughs> uh, I, I'll strike that and start over. Uh, Mayor, uh, I move to approve with the appropriate resolution. Second, planning commission recommendation adopted, adopt the re related resolution. There, I'll help you wearing. <laughs> Thanks. So I get for trying to do it without memorizing it. So we had a motion from Councilman Waring. Um, could this in the second was Councilman Stark? Yes. Who agrees? With, perfect. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Desicio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Gallego. Passes 9-0. All right, we move to a related agenda item on item 68. I will open the public hearing. We do not have any members of the public beyond the representative of the applicant to testify. Any questions for that individual? We'll close the public hearing. Councilman Waring, do you have a motion? Uh, motion to approve for the planning commission recommendation and adopt the related order. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Gallego. Yes. That says nine zero. Item 69 is amend airport height map. I'll turn to Deputy City Manager Ellen Stevenson to provide a brief introduction. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. This is a text amendment to the city code uh, to the airport zoning uh, maps. It is a request to change the section 4-241 zones to permit a height of up to 250 feet at the southwest corner of 1st Street and Jackson. Staff does recommend approval. The Central City Village Planning Committee heard this item and recommended approval 11 to 0. The Airport Zoning Commission heard it on February 3rd uh, and recommended approval. And with that, staff is happy to answer any questions on this item. Any questions for staff? We'll open the public hearing. You will be surprised to hear we have a representative for the applicant and available for questions if necessary. Any questions? 
We'll close the public hearing. Uh, the this item is in Council District Seven. Councilwoman Ansari, do you have a motion? Yes, motion to approve per the Airport Zoning Commission recommendation and adopt the related ordinance. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Ansari. Yes. Decisio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9 0. We next go to item 70, which is interior suites with accessory cooking facilities expansion. I'll ask our deputy city manager to briefly introduce. Thank you, Mayor, uh, members of council. This is a public hearing for a text amendment to the Phoenix zoning ordinance to expand the applicability of interior suites with accessory cooking facilities to the South Mountain, North Mountain, and Maryvale villages. Uh, this text amendment was recommended for approval by all of those village planning committees. The Planning Commission also voted to approve it 8-0. to zero. Staff does recommend approval per the Planning Commission recommendation and adoption of the related ordinance. And with that, Mayor, I'm happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions or comments from the Council? Okay, I will open the public hearing. Uh, we do have a representative for the applicant here for if any Council members have questions. Do any Council members have questions? We'll close the public hearing. Uh, do we have a motion on item 70? Motion to approve per the Planning Commission's recommendation and adopt the related ordinance. Second. We have um, a motion and a second. I think I heard Councilman Ansari first. Um, any additional comments? Roll call. Ansari? Yes. Decisio? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Castor? Gallego? Yes. S is 9 0. Wonderful. Thank you. We next go to an item that many in this community are very excited about. Uh, the South Central TOD community plan as corrected. I uh, will turn to our Jack of all trades and deputy planning director, Josh Bednark to begin the introduction to this item. Thank you, mayor. Mayor item 71 is a public hearing for GPA SM CC-1-21-7-8, the South Central TOD community plan. We are so excited to, uh, to, to be before you today to present the South Central TOD Community Plan, which we've had the pleasure of collaborating with the South Central community on for the last three years. Mayor, we have a brief presentation from Joel Carrasco and Elias Valencia, who have been our leads on this effort. We are incredibly proud of and grateful for all the work Joel and Elias have done with the community under your and the council's leadership to develop this plan. Joel and Elias. Thank you again, Mayor and Council. Uh, we really appreciate the time and uh, you all giving us the opportunity to speak about this tremendous effort here. And um, you know, we wanna just start off by saying this couldn't have been done with all of the previous leadership and direction that you had provided us throughout uh, the last decade, to be honest. Uh, we were very fortunate to receive a federal transit oriented development planning grant for our South Central community. And we have uh, had a great opportunity to build a relationship with them over the past three plus years. Uh, I just wanna show this map really quick of all of our transit oriented development districts across the city. I think this is a map that you all are familiar with and you've been seeing more and more often. 
And it really represents, again, the historical leadership that you and our city has led us to encourage more walkable, transit-oriented communities. So with that, the south um, end of the map there shows the South Central Corridor in green, and that will be the seventh transit-oriented district if it is adopted here today uh, with your approval. And I also just wanted to point out that this doesn't only connect our transit-oriented development network to South Central, uh, it also connects our residents in South Central to the regional assets that are now available through the other transit-oriented communities. So without any further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Elias, who has been our lead uh, point of contact with the South Central community. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Joel. Mayor Gallego and members of the council, thank you again for allowing us the privilege to present this milestone moment for the South Central Corridor. Um, very quickly, the South Central Corridor is an approximately five mile area located between the sevens, that is 7th Avenue and 7th Street, a Union Pacific Railroad to the north and South Mountain Avenue to the south. The South Central Transit Oriented Development Community Plan, or TOD for short, is a community vision that's crafted by the residents of South Central that guides the future of their corridor over the next 25 years. The South Central community vision is loud and clear. It rejects displacement and supports equitable transit-oriented development, meaning the South Central residents of today are the residents that will share in the prosperity of the South Central corridor of tomorrow. Next slide. And the plan moves forward towards that vision by providing a comprehensive framework that guides investment and the plan designates, community, designates areas to protect, enhance, and invest. Those areas were designated by the community and are illustrated on the map on the right. The uh, plan also has a policy framework that's a foundation for future funding and in infrastructure. And the letters on the map on the left represent things such as sidewalks, trees, uh, housing, employment, and parks. Of note, similar efforts in the past through reInvent Phoenix have set foundation for investments in those areas as well, um, such as for, through grants in um, Choice Neighborhoods projects, Canalscape improvement grants, things of that nature. So these maps in the plan are key to showing the, a visual of what the community has voiced and are really helpful in guiding the types of investment that come into the area. Next slide. The community plan elaborates on the corridor's four distinct sub-areas as seen through the eyes of the vision of, of the community. The sub-areas allow for a more context-sensitive approach from the mountain to the Rio to downtown. South Central has the makings of a world-class destination, offering something for every resident and visitor. But that's not all. The plan also establishes a comprehensive list of implementation strategies and actions. The plan has brought together and strengthened interdepartmental uh, relationships and community partnerships. It's identified both short and long-term implementation opportunities across the city to realize the vision. And although the community plan provides substantial guidance for rezoning properties, utilizing the walkable urban code, as you can see by the six planning elements, uso de terrenos, viviendas, desarrollo económico, and those strategies are in Spanish right there on purpose because we have a fully translated version of this plan in Spanish available online as well. But as you can see by the six elements of land use, housing, economic development, health, mobility, and green systems, the plan is a multidisciplinary effort, which is essential for an all hands on deck approach. Um, residents, businesses, and government, all will be necessary to heed the call. The plan celebrates the tremendous amount of community engagement over the last three plus years. Our grant team conducted bilingual outreach uh, through various formats, including media, print, uh, telephone, and even door to door. They uh, were able to conduct a series of workshops with 10 community workshops, knocking on over 10,000 doors, uh, over 68 touring road shows. And on top of that, we also had 30 plus community meetings through our South Central, South Central TOD Steering Committee, our uh, village planning commissions and our committees and our planning commission as well. 
Um, we kept all of these uh, events and processes happening throughout the planning efforts of the plan. Next, please. The plan also acknowledges all our community partners and documents their participation. Like the South Central community, the plan is filled to the brim with love. Thousands of residents gave up their time, their energy, and their expertise to ensure that their voices were united and that they were uh, captured in this document before you. Uh, several are here today to voice support of the document, but there are also several here that were not able to attend. And at, we would like to uh, give thanks to one of our recently passed TOD grant team members. Uh, without her positive attitude and, and her uh, loving attitude, we would not be able to have this plan where it is today. And so we want to give you a very special thank you, Amina. We miss you so much. We would like to thank the rest of the TOD grant team, the, Central, the South Central TOD Steering Committee, our uh, South Central Collaborative, and D7 and D8, that's uh, Councilwoman Ansari and Councilman Garcia, thank you also for working closely with us throughout these efforts. And of course, thank you, South Central. In closing, the plan received recommendations of support from mayor and council appointed South Central TOD Steering Committee, South Mountain and Central City Villages, and the Planning Commission and community partners. Therefore, staff's recommendation for today is to approve the South Central Transit Oriented Development Community Plan uh, per the Planning Commission's recommendation and for uh, the February 28th uh, correction memo from our Deputy Director in Planning. Um, with that, staff is available for any comments or questions you may have. Mayor Gallego and members of the Council, please. Thank you. And as you recognize th those who helped us with the plan, my, my mind is also um, Lyle was on our original team as we began this. So unfortunately, we've lost a few community members during this, but they leave behind a great legacy. Uh, we do have about 12 members of the public to provide comments. Do we have any counts? Uh, we'll go to uh, Council Member Garcia. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you to the staff for all the amazing work that was done. Um, I, I love the, the rejection of displacement and and that this plan is for the people of South Phoenix. Um, I'm excited to support this item. Uh, I know a lot of the work that the community input went into this plan. Um, I'd like to thank the TOD Planning Committee, the South Mountain Village Planning Committee, and the South Central Collaborative for all their time and effort. I'd also like to thank staff, Joel Carrasco, and especially Elias Valencia. I think you can hear it in your voice as you present the, the plan that you're proud of this uh, plan and the work that was done. And I want to thank you for for pouring your heart into this and and, and seeing you work through even some some uh, times that weren't as, as easy to go through. Uh, um, I, you know, I think that the facilitation and doing a, a real community process is is something that uh, it's, it's hard to do, and especially to be able to do it in a cultural culturally relevant way. Uh, in, in different languages and, and going to the people, not just expecting people to come to you. And this plan definitely did that. Um, this plan lays forth a vision. And as council and staff, we now have the responsibility to uplift and respect that vision so that it becomes a reality. Um, I, I really want to emphasize that a lot of times. Um, I haven't been here for too long, but in the time that I've been here, I've seen plans sit on the shelf. And I think for this one, it's important for us to understand the, the sweat and tears that went into this, um, even some folks that worked on it that are no longer with us. And, and so to honor them, to honor the work that's been done, I hope we could really live um, the goals of this plan. And so excited to, to hear from folks and, and to support this item. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And I know Councilman Ansari does have uh, significant comments as, as do uh, many of us, but we'll go and open the public hearing first. Uh, we'll begin with Greg Brunel, followed by Sam Gomez. Uh, thank you, Mary, uh, Mayor and the City Council. Um, uh, I support this. Um, uh, I want to make it uh, clear that I support this with the understanding that the City Council uh, and the process definitely has challenges. The um, uh, the 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 planning department, the people that worked in that, 
definitely poured their heart and soul in it. Uh, Petra Falcone, her group, they, they did the original outreach, which was about a year that was fabulous. I've never seen anything uh, like that. Now where we're at is that we have a plan that is subject to two council people, uh, some attorneys and some developers. And the challenge is to do better than that. This should not just be two council people that determine what goes on. There should be all the council people. There should not be a handful of 10 or 12 attorneys that decide what goes where and then muscles their way through. And this certainly shouldn't be determined by developers uh, who bring in money and just say, well, we've got the money and we'll do the development and you don't have another place to turn to. Okay, so you guys have the challenges. The um, uh, the city has done a remarkable, the city planning people have done a remarkable job. The community has done a remarkable job. Uh, the people gathering information, they've done a remarkable job. Now it's up to you and the people that come after you to do a remarkable job. And believe me, that isn't easy in our current climate. So I wish you the best. God bless you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Sam is next, followed by Gabe. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, City Council, for all the hard work. As you know, um, everyone in the community, um, all the partners have been working, you know, blood, sweat, and, and tears uh, with this. And, you know, it's just going to really be remarkable for this to happen. Like Greg is saying, um, you know, this is going to change the future. It's going to create a new model and how communities deal with uh, development as far as allowing them to have a voice, allowing them to be able to drive their destiny. Um, I think, you know, it's been a long, what, four or five years since we opened up the Sagrado and, uh, you know, working hard for the local artists and arts and culture is super important to me. And I'm looking forward to this plan to be implemented so we can not only uh, empower more of the arts and culture, but enhance it uh, for generations to come. And so uh, just, I just want to thank everybody for all the hard work and just the long hours and just the dedication and, and the sacrifice that it takes to do, put something like this in place. And so I um, just want to commend everybody and, and, and thank you and uh, looking forward for the future. Thank you so much, Council Member Garcia. Yeah, uh, thank you. Sam, I hope you're still on the line. Um, Thank you for, for a lot of the work that, that you've done and, and the organization have done. Can you speak to a little bit? I know earlier in the process, I saw you and some of the community folks come up with some art designs, working with youth, working with the community. Can you speak a little bit of how you see this plan moving forward and how the community could or should be engaged as we have designs coming in or, or, or as you know the whole project goes through? Yes, definitely. In the beginning, when um, the teams were doing the outreach for the design with the community design talks with the community, our program design empowerment PHX from our Sagrado, we were asked to participate and to facilitate the youth and to kind of kind of work with them to see what their vision is. And we were able to get a lot of uh, great ideas, a lot of design, a lot of stuff that we documented, and went from there to create some renderings. One specifically for the Central Avenue and Broadway location, which was identified as a kind of, uh, kind of driven park along with retail and kind of like more like a mixed use. Um, along as well as like the other things that we've identified in our community, like South Plaza, utilized as a somewhat like a cultural center um, for lowriders and just the traditions and the history and the preservation of South Central. And we were able to create some renderings on, on that as well. So a lot of the stuff that we've done and, and worked on as far as like our team with design is that we have a need based off uh, cultural practices, based off things that we lack like shade structure and also just places where uh, families can gather and just, you know, hang out on the weekends. Uh, a lot of our community has to go to Tempe or downtown, which is great, but we really see how we can keep our community, you know, keeping their dollars here in South Central, but also be able to just uh, be able to, you know, benefit from this investment that's coming in. Um, but we really would like to see the TLD plan kind of like 
how those things get implemented and, and, and documented and, and that everybody that gave uh, input on those designs that they really see their here. Uh, they really feel that the plan is intentional with their voice by seeing some of those things implemented. Now, of course, we can't get everything that we ask for, but at least there's there is some low hanging fruit there and there is some things that are very much possible and that are expected. Um, so I really would like to see that cohesiveness and um, I think just making sure that it doesn't get disconnected in the process. So really want to make sure that we, you know, we're committed to stay in the conversations and if, you know, um, this goes through that we really, you know, we get, you know, roll our sleeves up again and get and get to work. But I think it's going to be a lot funner, a lot more. This, you know, just a lot more, just a different energy that comes with this, but definitely want to like to see seeing it being cohesive versus getting lost in the sauce. So. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Thank you, Gabe. Jaramillo is next, followed by Francisca Montoya. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I appreciate your time. Uh, just, I'm just here to express my um, support for this and um, let you know what an amazing process it was to go through this and uh, be a part of this team to create these guidelines and hearing the residents come out and express their voice and uh, put down their vision of what they want to see for their community. and. Uh, like Sam had mentioned, really get the opportunity to benefit from the investment of the light rail and everything coming through. And, and what was what's needed is these guidelines to help partner with the developers and the businesses coming in so that the residents benefit from that. Um, so I'm here in support of that and, and just um, uh, I appreciate your time and I yield the rest of my time to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Francisca is next, followed by Eva. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Wonderful. Uh, Mayor and Council, um, I want to thank the City of Phoenix for embarking um, in this journey to really seek out public input and participation on how best to design a vision for the future of the South Central Corridor. The South Central Corridor for too long has been perceived as the underdog, the forgotten, the left behind, the place you don't want to visit at night. Their area has suffered from decades of underinvestment and all too often looked upon as a place with way too many challenges and tremendous adversity. But the South Central Phoenix is also a beautiful community that has withstood the test of time with optimism, strength, and resilience, and most important, a very deep sense of pride. It is time for the rest of the city of Phoenix to take notice. With the investment of construction of the South Phoenix light rail line, the time has come. I congratulate the South Central Corridor community who took their civic role serious to be heard and to be a voice to collectively shape and plan for a more connected and healthier community. The aspiration is for this to serve as a design guide for building a new ecosystem that is compact, walkable, pedestrian friendly, mixed use community that also supports small business enterprises. It merits respect and recognition to all those who cared and willingly gave their precious time and lent their voice. We understand that this is a multi-generational transit oriented development plan, and we know this is just the beginning. South Phoenix needs to play a role in helping Phoenix develop into a world-class city because it also matters to us. So in closing, I ask for your support and approval of item number 71. Thank you. Thank you. Eva is next, followed by Star. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council, City staff. I can't tell you enough how uh, appreciative I am of the support that was given to this TOD committee, which I was asked to chair. It, it was amazing that there was so much concentration on listening to the wisdom and the voices of the residents of the Warehouse District, Central City South and South Phoenix. We know that this plan is a plan that a lot of people are going to be held accountable in order to go through the implementation. We know that residents have to be involved. We know that the businesses have to be involved. 
we know the city has to be involved and we all equally are responsible to move this this plan forward. One of the other things that we realize is that this is a never ending plan. There's no end date, there's no drop dead date, there's no sunset date for this to be over. This is endless work. And it is our goal that we build the leadership to continue to work beyond those who are here today. I wanna to thank very much the committee members who did the hard work of asking people personally to come to meetings, to come to community meetings, to give their input at committee, uh, the TOD committee meetings, who came and, and shared their wisdom, their ideas and, and their contributions in a way that we've never seen before. We will not be discouraged by anyone. We will not be anything but energized by everything. There, again, there is no end to this work, and we hope that we will continue to do this work together with everyone in a way that reaches the vision, the goals, the dreams of such a deserving community. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you so much for your service. Star is next, followed by Armando. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Thank you for allowing me to share a few words today on the South Central Transit Oriented Development Plan, or TOD. I'd like to start by sharing that I was born and raised in South Phoenix and a proud Phoenician, and I also currently work in South Phoenix Corridor. This area means a lot to me because it represents my history, my culture, my roots, and the future for me and my family. It was an honor for me to have participated as a volunteer in this development of the TOD plan and to also lend my voice in the process. I'm excited that South Phoenix will finally have a light rail extension to help connect people to work, school, shopping and entertainment in the downtown core and throughout our beautiful city because we all deserve that. The TOD plan is a guide we can use as the future growth and development comes to the South to the Central City and to the South Phoenix area. I am proud of the hundreds of people who took part in some way to shape this form and this plan. Today, I ask for your approval of the South Central TOD oriented development plan and I look forward to our continued success. Thank you. Thank you. Armando is next, followed by Hinaro. Uh, thank you, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Armando Reyes, and I've lived in South Phoenix my whole life. I'm a stone's throw away from Central Avenue and all the development that's been occurring for the last two years. I was a member of the TOD uh, committee, and I'm here supporting the plan, and but also offering some caveats. And the caveats are that Plans only work if you have good partnerships and uh, neighborhoods need the city, especially the police department and neighborhood services. In the last couple of years, uh, the, the neighborhoods that are directly along Central Avenue have been a little bit uh, destabilized because of the construction that's been occurring. And it, it, some of the new development that's come in has not been healthy, it's not been good, it, just in our neighborhood. I think the two, Developments that we've had come in have been one of a uh, motorcycle biker gang and the other one is a club. And so we've had to deal with, you know, the, the shootings and the safety for uh, for the residents in that area. That's not what it I don't think anybody in their mind thought that that's what would happen. But we're battling, you know, shout out to. Councilman Ansari's office because they've been helping us and also, you know, to the police department because they've been active with us. Uh, I think we just are going to need some consistency on this and just realizing that the plan is good and it's only going to be effective long term. If the city works with its neighborhoods and neighborhoods work with its city, so we want to thank you for that. Thank you. We go from one Mr. Ruiz to our second. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council members. Uh, my name is Genaro Ruiz. I am the center director for the Rio Salado Audubon Center, located at 3131 South Central Avenue and a partner of the South Central Collaborative. Today, I am speaking in support of the adoption of the South Central TOD Community Plan. Society works tirelessly on behalf of creating a healthy environment rich in biodiversity and opportunities for all. A 
community with a strong and dependable transit system with streetscaping elements and equitable development opportunities can discourage vehicle dependence and congestion. A TLD community is thought to improve community health and a benefit for all. Active transportation benefits also include the alleviation of socio socioeconomic and health disparities. TOD areas reduce travel times, congestion, and emissions, which in South Central is a dangerous contributor to urban heat pockets. Creating places with safe opportunities to walk, bike, and access public transportation, along with equitable development opportunities, is key to amplify amplifying our area's quality of life. Today, I ask that you support the adoption of the South Central TOD Community Plan. Thank you for my time. Thank you. We'll go uh, next to Shannon, followed by Krista. Hello, Mayor Gallego, Vice Mayor Pastor, and members of the City Council. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to express my overwhelming support for agenda item number 71, the South Central TOD Community Plan. Bravo, Elias, bravo, Joel, bravo, all of you. The incredible policy work of the Council and the unbelievable dedication and expertise of the City of Phoenix staff has just been, we're all overwhelmed with emotion today. Um, yes, and today I urge you to adopt the South Central TOD Community Plan, and I also urge you to immediately begin implementing the plan. Time is of the essence. A few critical implementation steps. We believe at the South Central Collaborative are imperative you need to commit the necessary staff resources to prioritize the successful implementation of the plan. We recommend creating an early warning system, establishing a set of specialized information services that will provide advanced warning to community stakeholders and community members if the city of Phoenix land use and zoning trends that may run counter to the community plan. We urge you to work with the Sound Center Collaborative at all of the thousands of partners throughout the corridor to create and implement a South Central between the seventh infrastructure plan and financing strategy. We know that will take decades to fund. And as Eva said, we're in this for the long haul. You need to utilize local, regional, state, and federal funding to provide the necessary infrastructure that was promised to this community all the way back when it was annexed in the 1960s. We recommend you develop programs to involve and support black, indigenous, and people of color housing developers to build the necessary mixed income housing and commercial developments that are recommended in the plan, as well as to create and support programs to train urban landscape and forestry practitioners that live and work in these corridors to leverage further economic benefits from the corridor and the greening and the walkability improvements. Please adopt this plan and please continue your exceptional work to work with us to implement it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Krista is next, followed by Jose. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council, and City staff. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Krista Shepard. I'm a principal at Gould Evans, and um, I've been a resident for um, over 20 years in District 8. I'm a current resident in District 6 for the last four years, and I have a business, Gould Evans, in District 8. Um, we have been had the honor of serving as co-prime with Promise Arizona and Petra Falcone to um, capture the community's vision that Elias um, conveyed today. Um, your vote to support this plan is, will be a demonstration to prioritize equity for our entire city, not just for District 7 or District 8. Um, as part of this team, we've had the opportunity to document the community's vision through a variety of workshops and methods. We've consolidated decades worth of hard work from the community and the plans that they have they have provided um, to have a better quality of life for their families. Um, we um, want the community to know that um, not only have we taken that work from the vision sessions um, and documented that, but we have also provided the technical analysis that's necessary for such a policy plan. We understand that this area is at a very high risk of displacement, um, given the housing stock, the income, the level of renters and um, the factors going into um, this plan. So we urge the, uh, the council to pass this plan overwhelmingly, um, hopefully with a nine to zero vote in support of these goals for our entire city. This is an important first step 
um, and the work must be implemented beyond this. And so we ask for your persistence, diligence, and uh, vision towards implementing this goal. We thank you for your this opportunity today, and we look forward to um, being your partner in helping implement this. Thank you. Thank you. Jose is next, followed by Victor. Um, good, af good afternoon, uh, Mayor Gallego, Vice Mayor Pastor, and City Council members and city staff. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to so I can share uh, my support of this plan uh, on behalf of really all our families in South Phoenix and um, so, of South Central communities to um, it is a it is a, a huge endeavor. I mean, Central Avenue right now with during the construction of the library is it's kind of a mess It creates lots of uh, disruptions. Right. And um, but really, uh, you know, we were as residents as a resident of South Phoenix. I'm willing to take all that and, and accept it. And as long as, um, you know, because it's not for today, it's for our future, for my kids' future, grandkids. And um, so really this this plan is very comprehensive. It addresses a lot of, of my concerns uh, for the future of my family. And and I think uh, by having a voice and, and, and having you adopt this plan, it really will give me a peace of mind um, as, as a resident that, that a lot of the things are, are being considered for for the benefit of the South Phoenix, South Central community. And so I really appreciate you uh, considering it and adopting this plan today. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Thank you. Victor is next, followed by Jeffrey Walker. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Gallego, Council and staff for, for all the work and for giving us the time today uh, to share our support for this plan. Um, critical to the success of any plan is really its usefulness and its relevance. And out of all the years that I've been involved in organizing, um, working in community, I've never seen an effort like this where so many voices from the community were listened to and it's actually embedded through the plan. And, and to see so many of the fingerprints of people who live here, work here, and are seriously concerned about displacement, being involved in the process uh, is just something I've never seen. So I'm very proud of Joelle and Elias and, and all the support staff that uh, really helped put together this plan uh, and all the volunteers that, that really helped. Uh, we all know that, you know, from the economic models that have been proven out, not only here in Phoenix, but across the country, for every dollar spent in light rail infrastructure, $8 of development follows. So with the billion dollar investment we have coming in the South Central uh, we can expect at least $8 billion in the next decade to come. So it's going to be really important right, to stay true to this plan. Uh, I really do believe that it, this provides uh, citywide guidance for all of our policymakers uh, to really encourage you know, the right type of transition from the existing condition that South Central is in today into a more equitable, a healthier, uh, and more economically resilient and sustainable transit oriented development uh, community that uh, I can be proud of, uh, my children can be proud of, and our kids can, uh, kids, children's children can be proud of uh, in the future. So let's make South Central world class, uh, but also let's put the resources necessary to implement this plan uh, and really give the support to this neighborhood um, and to all the people who live here and putting people first. So thank you all for your time today and I urge you to uh, please support this plan. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Walker will be our final comment today on this item. Good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor and Council and staff. I uh, just want to say that I am in full support of the adoption of this uh, TOD plan uh, for South Central. Uh, it is very vital uh, that the residents, uh, that their voices are going to be heard uh, and having the opportunity to take advantage of the uh, tremendous potential that is coming in because of the light rail extension, uh, but to do it in a caring and concerned way that is going to prevent uh, uh, gentrification and displacement and, and allowing them uh, to be able to uh, be safe, uh, improve their quality of life uh, as well as having future opportunities for the generations to come. So we understand that this is just a first step in adoption. And then uh, as made mentioned uh, with uh, intention and, and understanding that quickly implementing the plan 
uh, is going to be the utmost importance and making sure that this plan is there from the beginning uh, uh, and giving us this opportunity to have a very positive outcome uh, for the residents. Uh, I have not been in Phoenix that long, four years, uh, but uh, being and working there and being a minister in the community, I see uh, that the people need to have uh, a better opportunity. So uh, this plan will go a long way in making sure that that happens. So uh, just imploring you as, as, as well as council to adopt this plan and then move forward with the implementation. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony. We'll close the public hearing. Um, I will turn to Councilwoman mm. and Councilman Garcia. Yeah, just okay. just pointing out our office got called by uh, Petra Falcone. She's she's on the phone and wasn't called before you close the public hearing. Okay, um, our staff gave me a list of registered individuals and and, and um, the only one who was I did not see was Thomas Kelly. Uh, but uh, um, do we have for our tech staff? What do we have? Um, I have Mayor, yes. this is the city clerk. Uh, Petra did not register to speak, but she is on the line. Wonderful. Uh, we are very grateful to um, Petra for her, her long time service and we'll find a way to recognize her. But I'm trying to be consistent with people who have registered to speak and, and we often. I, I think being consistent is valuable. Pe Petra, thank you. 10,000. Contacts was amazing and very much appreciate your hard work on this. So I am going to go ahead and close the public hearing and turn to Councilwoman Ansari. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my comments are long because this is hugely important today. This is such an exciting day for South Phoenix residents and local leaders who have long called for investments in their community. This process has been in the works since 2016, six years. Various nonprofits and the South Central TOD Steering Committee have been hard at work putting forth a plan to attract and guide plans for housing, economic development, and infrastructure that incorporates the voices of all who call this part of the city home. Just last week, we held a D7 infrastructure tour with many of the leaders who have been part of this process and who are on the call today. Deputy City Manager Mario Paniagua and Streets Director Kini Knudsen and many more who will help execute implementation and more importantly, keep us accountable in actually delivering this plan. We heard from many of the folks um, who called in today and their message was loud and clear, implementation, implementation, implementation. At its core, the document provides strategies for displacement and will help create a more prosperous and, and uh, sustainable South Central Corridor. This journey has been one of rebuilding trust and enhancing gems one can already find in South Phoenix, such as the Rio Salado, incoming light rail and iconic small businesses. We must take the opportunity to integrate our rich history into our future. I also wanna take a moment to read out some of the names of the leaders who I've gotten to work with and gotten to know over this time period and would be remiss not to mention here. Victor Vidales, Shannon Scutari, Francisca Montoya, Sam Gomez, Eva Olivas, Tom Kelly, Krista Shepard, Petra Falcone, Pastor Jeffrey Walker, Armando Ruiz, Hanar Ruiz, and so many others. Also want to give a huge thank you to Shannon Scutari. She's been the fearless leader of the South Central Collaborative and again has been working on this for many, many years. Thank you for your tireless work. Also want to um, join all of the callers and um, my colleague, Councilman Garcia, in giving a shout out to our city staff, um, Joel and Elias, who have been leading this project. Community leaders cannot rave enough about you two. I know that um, they even asked publicly, they asked Josh if Elias could get a raise. Um, I have no power in this area, but thought I'd relay here today. Young, passionate people have been in the heart of working to create a plan that serves our immediate needs and future generations. Um, one soul that we lost unexpectedly throughout this process is Amina Warayat. Uh, she's a young designer at Gold Evans. She's honored here in this plan, and I believe her family might be on the call today. Um, and we can see one of her final projects today across the finish line. 
We cannot take for granted thoughtful planners and designers who truly care about projects being a benefit and a service to the community. And Amina was absolutely one of those figures who had an incredibly bright future ahead of her. My deepest condolences to her family, her friends, peers, and the entire Gold Evans team. Finally, a huge thank you to city staff, the planning department, parks, Office of Environmental Programs, Arts and Culture, Transit, Streets. I could go on and on because truly nearly every department at the City of Phoenix touched this plan in some way, shape, or form. And the TOD grant team and everyone who was a part of this. Uh, we all know the true work starts now. It was emphasized time and time again by everyone who called in today. Um, and I want to echo all of the recommendations that were put forth um, by Shannon, whether it's committing the necessary staff resources to implementing, uh, working with partners who have been involved in this process from the beginning and elevating um, communities of color and developers who come from the community. I will be paying close attention um, to all proposals and future projects because I want to make sure that we're working hand in hand with the community to make sure that anything um, new and everything that we are working on is in line with the South Central TOD plan. Thank you so much and congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you for getting to work on that so quickly. Councilwoman Gordado. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, I'm also very excited about this TOD plan. Um, you know, very excited about the community. Um, just want to thank everyone out in the community that was part of this. I know that it's been it's been in the works for a very long time. Um, you know, all of the community groups um, that brought this together. I think as council members, we appreciate every time um, people in the community get involved in these in, in these plans. And I think that the reason why these plans are successful is when we get real community input. Um, Sam, thank you so much for all of your hard work. Um, like Council Member Garcia said, um, you know, through your presentation, we could see how much of your, your heart you put into this and, and working with the community um, to make this happen. Super exciting, but of course, um, big shout out um, to one, to one of the best organizers that I know, Councilmember Garcia, um, for all of your hard work as well on this. Um, it's very telling, everything that happened. Um, and thank you so much for your leadership and hard work and for everyone's um, hard work on this. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much. Do we have additional uh, Councilwoman Stark? Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is what planning is all about, is working with the community to develop a vision and then make strategies to implement this vision. And this is a very well done plan. I am proud to say I'm going to support this. I want to put a big thank, uh, thank you out there to our staff, especially the planners. You know, I'm a little partial to them, but excellent work and um, I can't wait to see this be replicated in other parts of our city along the light rail. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, thank you. So bravo, bravo to the community, bravo to many years of hard work and uh, to those that uh, were here before that started and aren't here to see it be completed. Um, I'm glad to hear that this plan is a plan of the people uh, because it is the responsibility of electeds to lift this plan by putting the resources needed towards the impl implementation of the TOD. Plus, we have to educate our departments the importance of preserving our culture and our diversity of that area while we grow. Displacement, the key element to me to avoid is displacement. As I have watched light rail be built section by section. And this one area is really the key. I direct the city to work with the community to ensure this doesn't happen. I also want to make a comment 
uh, regarding Greg's comment. Greg is correct in the sense of we, it's the electeds that are gonna, gonna lift. But where I disagree with Greg is it's the community that needs to hold us responsible. And it's the community today who sits here today and takes this vote won't be here tomorrow. So the responsibility of the community is also to elect officials that are going to support the TOD of the future. And so Greg, you and I are great friends, but this is where I disagree with you because the community still has to hold us responsible and hold the future responsible and make the TOD happen and be implemented. Thank you. Thank you. Additional council member comments? Wonderful. Um, I will add my thanks to um, the many people involved in this process, the great work from Josh and, and his team. Uh, I also want to thank our light rail administrator, Marcus Coleman, for his work. There were more than 10 residents of Phoenix, mostly District 7 and 8 residents, who went to the Department of Transportation in Washington, D.C. to advocate for this project. And I, I hope uh, they, too, are proud today of, of where we ended up. It is a much more robust process than when we've done on previous uh, plans, including the, the original TOD plans with which much more involvement and recommendations that go be far beyond the original scope. We hope it will help people move towards what they want for their community and, and to benefit as much as possible from light rail and the other investments in this sector. So thank you to everyone who worked on this important item. With that, we'll move to roll call. Mayor, if I may, we oh, do need a motion. Uh, okay. Councilmember Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, motion to approve item 71 per the staff correction memo of January 28th and adopt the related resolution. Mayor, uh, yeah. this is Josh. Just, just real quick, it's the staff memo February 28th. February 28th. Yes, sir. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. No. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. No. Pastor. I feel the love from two people. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes seven two. We move to our final two agendized items. They are related uh, to the southwest corner of 19th Avenue and South Mountain. I will turn to Alan Stevenson, our deputy city manager, to briefly introduce these two items, and then we will have a joint public hearing on both. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, these two items, as you noted, are a general plan amendment, item 72, and a rezoning case that's related to the same parcel, uh, item 73. They are located at the southwest corner of 19th uh, Avenue and South Mountain. The general plan amendment is a request to change the land use map from residential one to two dwelling units per acre to two to 3.5 dwelling units per acre. Uh, this request was heard by the South Mountain Village Planning Committee, recommended to dial by a vote of 10 to four. The Planning Commission heard the case uh, in February uh, 3rd, and they recommended approval per the staff recommendation by a vote of 6 to 2. The related zoning case uh, was at that same location. It's to go from S1 to approved R1 and approved R118 to R110 for a single-family residential development of all detached homes. Uh, the South Mountain Village Planning Committee heard the case and recommended denial. The Planning Commission did hear the case uh, and recommended approval per the Addendum C staff report by a vote of 6 to 2, where a number of changes were made uh, to drop the density and make some site plan changes to address some of the neighborhood concerns with both of those items. Uh, with that, staff's happy to answer any further questions. Thank you. Any questions? 
All right, we will open the public hearing and this will be for both items 72 and 73. Public hearing is open. We have only a representative for the applicant available to speak. Does anyone have any questions for the representative of the applicant? We will close the public hearing. I will turn to Council Member Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. And I want to thank the, the community who came together. Um, we approved the case uh, at the last meeting that was uh, next to this. Um, it took a lot of work. Um, the project has changed from the from its from how it was seen at the village. And so really thankful for both the applicant and the community who came together. Um, we, we had some meetings even outside in the cold standing around and, and, and really thankful for everyone who, who came together to make it happen. Um, so motion to approve uh, item 72 per the planning commission recommendation and adopt the re related resolution. Uh, Second. Can I add 72 and 73 or do we have to do one for each? Uh, Councilman Garcia, Mayor, they should be separate motions. Second. Any comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Decisio. I apologize. I didn't hear. I'll try one more time. Decisio. Garcia. Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? O'Brien? Stark? Yes. Waring? One moment, Mayor. It appears that we're having issues with the phone line. I apologize. We're going to try reconnecting the phone line. Welcome to WebEx. Press one. Mayor, if I may, I will go back and see if I can um, reach the persons that were on the phone. Councilman DeCicio, can you hear me? I can now, yeah, something happened, sorry about that. I'm sorry, yes, we had an issue with the phone. We are on item 72 and there's a motion to approve. Right. Um, so if you may express your vote. Yes. Thank you. The vote would be yes. Thank you. Councilwoman O'Brien, can you hear me? Thank you. I can. Thank you very much. We're on item 72. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Waring, can you hear me? I can. Uh, I guess we got disconnected. Is that, yes. I just got back on. Yes. Okay. We are on item 72, motion to approve. Uh, how may you vote? Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, I, I vote aye. Thank you. Pastor? Yes. Thank you. Gallego. Yes. Thank you. Passes 9-0. Item 73 is a related item. Council Member Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, motion to approve item 73 uh, per the Planning Commission recommendation and adopt the related ordinance. Second. Second. Any comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Thank you. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9 0. 
That concludes the agendized portion of today's meeting. I'll turn to our city attorney to introduce the final portion of our meeting resident comments. Thank you, mayor. During citizen comment, members of the public may address the city council for up to three minutes on issues of interest or concern to them. The Arizona open meeting law permits the city council to listen to the comments, but prohibits council members from discussing or acting on the matters presented. Today, we have one member of the public to address the council. Jeremy Thacker, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, after submitting two petitions, uh, citizens' petitions over the last month uh, that have both been handled in violation of the city charter and code, uh, today I'm submitting a third petition to uh, for the city, the full city council uh, to clarify the how the city handles citizen petitions currently. Um, and additionally, I'm asking the council to determine if the city's handling of my petitions and of citizens' petitions in general violate the city charter and city code. If the council, if the council does determine violations have occurred, which I believe is the inevitable conclusion, the council should determine what remedies are available to those affected by the violations. As of yesterday, I became aware that the current process for handling citizens' petitions was ordered by the mayor in a memo in August of 2019. And again, in July of 2021, the mayor's memo mandates the subcommittees that meet only once per month review all citizen petitions. The mayor's orders directly contradicts the city charter and code of how petitions are handled. To change the city code requires an ordinance approved by the city council during a public meeting. No such ordinance exists as no public hearing or vote has been held. To change the charter regarding citizen petitions would require the citizens to approve the change via ballot initiative which also has not happened. Without approval of the city council or notifying the citizens, much less getting their approval via ballot initiative, the city on order of the mayor has significantly weakened the citizens' last line of defense by making unauthorized, unpublished, and unwanted changes to the citizen petition process in violation of the charter and code. I'm, I've submitted my written petition earlier uh, during this meeting and look forward to uh, hearing from the full council on this. Thank you. That concludes public comment. We are adjourned. that I mentor others and, and give my time to other folks, all levels of the organization, because you never know where that hidden gem is going to be. I mean, who knew when I was an internal auditor one that I would one day be city manager? I'm, I'm very comfortable with people of lower means than I am. Growing up in public housing, you see a lot of the bad side of society. And when I was younger, I always wanted to be in a position that I could help people that were in positions like me. So as city manager, I have the opportunity on a daily basis to lead over 14,000 employees that deliver services to 1.7 million residents on a daily basis. And some of those services are things that are vital to their everyday survival. When asked what is he most proud of as city manager, he answered. With the city, I think I have to say, you know, cracking the ceiling and being the first black city manager is something that I take um, a lot of pride in. Um, you know, I didn't do that alone, though. Um, with me, everything I do is through a team. You know, I, I wouldn't have gotten here without the help.